My name is Erin Chapman. I'm an adult services librarian here. And um, so thank you so much for coming out today for this program. And we're excited. We've had Heinz here before and so happy to have him back. Um, on the table, I brought out, we love to tie any of our programs to the library collection. So there are, there are so many of the topics that um, Heinz will be covering today. We have books on that topic. We have resources on that topic. So please continue, you know, your education here. If you're interested, in, you know, and you want to go further, um, that's just a, you know, small sampling of what we can get for you. And we have programs coming up in February. I heard you were talking about online security. Uh, every second Saturday of the month, we have computer classes. The next one that we're providing will be February 10th at 10.30. Uh, we have a wonderful in, a computer instructor who comes in and who's, uh, you know, we get rave reviews about, so, and there's limited seating. So I really hope that, you know, you can join us for, for his next coming class. It's all about um, devices and smartphones and security and, you know, best practices and all that good stuff. So that'll be definitely good, worth your time. Uh, we have a Michigan in World War II presentation coming up in February, as well as genealogy, one-on-one uh, -on -one genealogy from the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution. So if you're interested in receiving that one-on-one -on -one genealogy help, you can join us for that in February. We have book discussion groups. We have a yoga. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we have a writing group. If you or anyone you know is working on your novel, your memoir, your nonfiction, join us for our writing group. Um, and uh, let's see, this friend, uh, this program today is brought to you by our friends of the library. We're incredibly grateful for, for their organization, their time and volunteer work, um, everything that they do, the books that we sell, our donations that they process and and um, sell, and then they're the funds that they gather to support so many resources and programs like this program that we're having today. So we're very grateful to the friends of the library. No further ado, <laughs> man. I'm going to introduce myself. <laughs> All right. We're pretty good to the environment, don't you? Right? We yeah. should. Don't we? Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. I'll make a deal with it. The answer is yes. To interact. You just kind of go, yeah, oh, okay. I do that with the class when I teach at Wednesday. They're kind of okay. Uh, I want you to put your hand up. Okay, this is who I am. My name is, it's kind of a German name, but that's okay. I'm an American. I thought I was born here. I'm an immigrant here from Canada. You play hockey, I did. I tried at least. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a bunch of things around environmental. This is a conversation. This is not a, hey, watch my slides. This is going to be a conversation. I'm going to say, I'm going to just give you some information first to make you think. Because that's the hardest thing that we do these days is think, right? Thinking's hard when you're doing this all the time. Uh -huh. But I'm going to make you think. So you're going to have thinking, discussion, debate, and then I want you to make some decisions about your behavior. What can you do to change stuff? Well, I can't do much of this. me. But there's stuff that we can do. And then I'm going to give you a chance on those post it notes to write down just a couple of things you can do. Say, hey, I think I can change this. I can do something different. So I have kind of an agenda across here. This is who I am. Uh, I want to spend a lot of my early adult life going to school. I have a PhD in chemistry and a master's degree in chemical engineering. Does that mean I'm smart? You guys have had professors, but you kind of wonder, right? I'm not going to say anymore. What it means is I can work hard and I can stay in school. <laughs> I worked in industry for over 35 years. I worked in Germany a couple of times, Canada about 10 years. Moved to Michigan in 2001. I, Retired, I don't say I retired, I pivoted. And I set up a company that does career coaching and stuff like that and does these kinds of things. And I do a bunch of other little hobbyish kind of things like write stuff. And Aaron was talking about writing. I have a, a textbook with a guy from the University of Detroit, Industrial Catalysis. 
He gets money for it, I know. <laughs> the stuff on green chemistry, some of the stuff we're going to talk about today, again, that's just fun for me to do. When you retire, it should be fun. You work hard to get there. Okay. So, yeah, I teach at a couple of universities. I sit on a lot of boards and stuff like that. I have a, a very busy, fun life. <laughs> Uh, I also do some other stuff. I play the occasional music gig. Uh, I play a thing called a pedal steel guitar. And here I am sitting with a jazz band. Um, this is a pastor of a, I guess if you like a Baptist church in Canada, and he's a really good accordion player. And I said, I'll play banjo for your song. This is actually like a men's practice. He said, come play banjo. Why? So this is the worst kind of gag in the world, right? You guys probably know that. What's the, the nicest sound in the world is when when the accordion lands in the dumpster and the banjo crashes on top of it, right? Those are, those are. <laughs> I don't know why people say that. But anyways, so I want to talk about a number of different environmental things. The first one is water. The amount of water on Earth is fixed. We don't make any more water. But we have no regard. About a billion people walk two miles every day to get their water for their daily use. They wash, bathe, cook, all that stuff. It's mostly women. And most of our wash water that goes down our drains is cleaner than what they're drinking. So lucky for us, we're on the Great Lakes and we have lots of water that's okay. And you can only survive a couple of days without water, which means, yeah, you need to have a lot of water. <clears throat> now, I'm going to pick a war with these people. Um, they're over, how many people are on our, am I know? Another million. Seven billion, well, it's like seven ish, eight ish now, something like that. It doesn't matter. But there are about 40 billion water bottles like this filled every year. Wait a minute. There are only seven, eight billion people. I talked to somebody that's a marketing manager for one of the biggest water companies, not these guys. And she said, It's a great business. It's great. We pump it out of some wells, we bottle it, and you guys buy it. So, <laughs> I mean, how many times did you go to a meeting or go to anything like this? And I had to tell, I had to kind of persuade you, don't bring any bottled water, no bottled water. No bottled water, in case you didn't hear, no bottled water. <laughs> because the problem isn't the water. It takes about, it takes several gallons of water to produce one of these. Because they have to cure fed in, in their process, and the rest of the water winds up back in the river, back in the Great Lake. That's all water that people are walking miles to get, not even as clean as that. So the challenge there is, why are we doing this? What else could we do? Uh, you see, I have a selection of other like reusable water bottles. Anyone want one? Yeah. Would you like? <laughs> I have a selection. You can come and get whatever one you want. Or some of you, I mean, this, this is interactive. You can come up with, this one even is a Woodland Church one. Anybody want a Woodland Church one? <laughs> I do. I <laughs> oh, <laughs> this one here? This is, this is from Florida. This is from a company that actually goes out to water and the water industry. So you can reuse that so you don't have to buy these. So where are you going to get your water? I'm going to talk about that in a second. So most of this stuff isn't even recycled. I talked to somebody this week and I showed them my present. They said, oh, I'm glad it's on lemon. Okay. Yeah. Eleven, she said, but it's really going up to twelve too. Okay. It's like nothing, right? It's really not much of a difference. Either. And so the challenge there is, we get a lot of plastic that's produced. The winds up. Where does this stuff go? Landfill. Landfill. Only ten percent recycled, and I don't know where recycle facilities are in the Detroit area. I should know. Maybe hey, back with worse. It's good. <laughs> so it's supposed to go in our recycle boxes and then we recycle somewhere. But I don't resource that stuff. I know we tried to find out all where that stuff went. <laughs> they have a real advantage over you, Sandy, because these guys know me. Oh. <laughs> so when I say something funny, they might laugh at the right time or not. <laughs> you guys have thrown my side today or not. I have to be careful now because she's recording this. <laughs> so what are the biggest uses for water? Agriculture and industry and cleaning. And I'm gonna talk about cleaning in a second too. In our culture, 
the dictate is that you don't walk around smelling and stinky and stuff. Like and so the disadvantage there is, well, do you have to take a shower every day, or do you just want to be clean? Hi. The room went quiet, huh? <laughs> anyway, so the dictate of our culture is not to be offensive that way. But the question is, is a shower the only way you can get there? What kinds of things? You make a swine bath and you wipe yourself off with a soapy uh, towel or something like that. There are all kinds of ways to get there. We're going to talk about showers in a second. Another big, big use for water, Katie, I'm going to talk about that more, is lawns and fertilizers. Fertilizers in lawns, one of the biggest uses of fertilizers is agriculture, but also lawns. Right here. Pesticides, lawns is also one of the biggest uses. So we can have a nice green lawn. There were no green lawns before the Middle Ages. In the Middle Ages, the aristocracy said, hey, we have servants that can look at this stuff and it looks nice to look like fucking a palace, right? Or your front lawn. And what use does that serve? Well, it produces some oxygen a little bit. But I suppose you don't have any cows on your property here. Or... All right, come in, come in. All right. I'm just wandering in. That's okay. <laughs> so now Aaron's going to give you stuff to do right away with what's opposing them. <clears throat> so, and of course, so recreation too. Um, in one of these books that I showed you, there's a chapter in there called Swimming in the Desert. Right by a professor at the University of Detroit, uh, University of Michigan, in Germany. And it's all about one of the biggest uses of water in the southwest, Nevada, Arizona, where they hardly have enough water to drink. But almost every house has what? A swimming pool. Why? Because it's kind of a cultural thing. We should have a swimming pool. All the neighbors, if you fly in over those areas, why is it blue spots, blue spots? It's all water that you can no longer drink because it's treated chemical recreation. So there are all kinds of things that water is being used for. I, I talked a little bit about shower. Is there something that you can do when you have a shower and maybe make it shorter, maybe make it look cooler, maybe, I don't know. We have a little switch on our thing up here on our faucet that you can shut it off. So the I have to be careful when I said, the days I decide to have a shower instead of getting clean some other way, a bath or something, I will get in, get wet, push off the water, lather up, turn it back on, get hosed off, and that's my shower. Typically, a shower is about 40 gallons of water. We talked about 8 billion people walking miles to get their daily water. And I'm just throwing it down the drain. It goes back to the Great Lakes. Uh, I had to laugh when I saw this. This is one of these things about a lot of waters. But if you have kids, this collection says, no mind, no mind, no mind, no mind, no mind. Thanks. So what do you do? If you go to a party or something like that, and they're doing that, what can you do? Singing. Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> because then you don't have a whole collection of these bottles sitting there and say, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how many meetings we have gone to if you work in industry or even in public environment. You go to a meeting and it's a table full of bottles of water. But I don't get you a bottle of water. Why? I'm not really thirsty usually right now, but we're going to get them because our culture is kind of our way of extending some niceties. I'll get you some water. And where does it go? It sits on the table until the end of the meeting and then it goes down there. Goes down. So water is a real tricky one to handle. There are a lot of things I need you to just think about stuff because later I'm going to ask you, what are you going to do? So I'm going to suggest, I already gave a couple of bottles away. Refuse these. Just say, you know, uh, no, I don't want it. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. You can put this away. Take it back. I'm going to put it back. Don't worry, we're going to play a game over here. Um, <laughs> do you this is bottled in the Bologna City water? Detroit City in the Bologna. This is? Yep. Wonderful. And how many gallons do they use to take one? You make them this. Yeah, about four. Thanks, Bill. I'll need it back. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so I gave away a couple of bottles of water. Here's a waste state. Maybe you're going to waste state. Yeah, no, like that. Sure. Go to target. <laughs> and I just said, oh, look, I gave away the woodland bottle already. Really. Oh, here. You can give it to somebody else if you wanted. I'll take them. No, I'm using, I'm using one. <laughs> okay. Because I'm going to use that set of bottles that, that Aaron may have brought me. <laughs> 
So the idea is to replace it with refillables. Again, I got a couple more if anybody wants one that says PASF or this one says water you. I don't know what that means. It can be a little bit saying, what are you? <laughs> but we can do this and say, guess what? We get these all over the place. People give you these things. And then we wonder, what are we going to do with them? What? You laugh. We had like a whole closet full of these. And I said to my wife of over 40 years, are you giving a talk of water today? Yeah. Can you get rid of a bunch of those bottles? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> How kind I am to you. So replacing with refillables. Now where are you going to get your water? Let's put it in there. Next question. Then you're going to require filtered or treated water. Now, <laughs> how did I change gears and talk about toilet paper? It came up on a search I did. I was talking about water because everything that goes down your toilet is becomes treated water. But this is totally absurd. Why do we Use the most toilet paper. I don't know. I'm going to come back over here. Rule one is no judgment. No judgment. <laughs> Why do we? Anyway, it is what it is. It is what it is. But I just thought that was kind of funny when I read that. I thought, that's really curious. You know, that we use more toilet paper. And it goes down into our water for treatment. Okay. Now, this is a brilliant sink. This is a sink designed in Japan. This is the toilet tank here. And this is the sink that sits on top of the toilet. Tank. So you can wash your hands after you do your toilet paper business and just use the water in your toilet tank. Now, I was so taken by that as being genius. I looked them up. You can actually get them here. If you're looking for a new toilet tank, think about it. Again, not preaching anybody. No judgment. Anybody have any questions about water? Oh, friend of mine. Yeah, this is material. Put this in the toilet. Put this in, in the bathroom of his house. So, uh, don't put anything in the toilet unless you eat first. <laughs> <laughs> Another one I saw in the Georgian Bay area when I was camping at my friend's cabin was if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, then it's it out. <laughs> yeah, you have to be careful that you don't yellow your toilet. But it's <laughs> but the, that, that's a way, a way of thinking it too. And people that I know that have like shallow wells where it's tough to get water, they would say, you know, every flush is a pain for it. Um, I'm going to go back to this. Uh, and this was off of Georgian Bay, actually, in a place in Penetanguishi. So you might know where that is. Um, the guy was a world famous pedal steel guitar builder. So, and he has since died. And I don't know if he took the sign with him or not. <laughs> we have this in our yard. This is a water drop, water collection drop. It's up to our eave drop here. And when you look at the size of your roof, it doesn't have to rain much before this thing is full. And what do we do with that stuff? We water our garden. We wash that. Those were not allowed. Hmm? I thought those were allowed. Right? Not that I've seen or heard. I don't know. I don't know. I've heard that. That they're not allowed. I don't know. We looked and we didn't see anything that said not good. So I don't know. It could be wrong. Well, that's a good idea. Wouldn't be my first mistake. Yeah. I think I know if it's in your backyard. I don't know. <laughs> it's yours. It's it's <laughs> anyway, so you're we use it. You're going to yeah. water the we, garden. Yeah, we, we water the garden. We use it to rinse stuff out. Um, you know, we have a, a little bucket of compost in our, in our kitchen. We use it to rinse it out. So that's it. I don't know. All I know is it's thinking of what else can we do? I got a quick question about um, the lawn part of things. Obviously, I was a lawn guy for years. Yeah. I didn't do a lot of spraying, but lawn watering, you're actually taking treated water and putting it right back in the ground, which is nice because it's good and clean water. I've got a well, so you're actually purifying the water for me and my well eventually, correct? Unless you add a bunch of fertilizers and pesticides to it. What else have you got on your lawn? So, yeah. right. so I kind of don't mind if you go ahead and water your lawn a lot because again, that's just adding to the to the clean aspect of the water, right? Yes, I know. The other thing that happens though, when it rains, it's going through the ground and it winds up meeting the other water. And when it goes through the ground, it's filtered too. Right? Yeah. So wow. the biggest concern would be when you are, like you said, if you're starting to dissolve away your pesticides and other stuff, fertilizer, that's that's getting into your water. Into your water. Yeah. Well, a lot of that gets evaporated too in warm weather before it gets deep enough into the ground. Which water? The water you put on your lawn. Yeah, yeah that's a tough. Yeah, if you if you water it at the wrong time of the day, it's just yeah, uh, yeah, 
So what do you have to do? Use your brain. Yeah, watering. Water. Why would you water like it? And you, that's hot. So more early morning, later night. If you feel you have to water, there are other ways to get around it. Water is a water is a problem. And it's a resource, as I said. We can just enjoy that. We sit on some of the nicest fresh water in the world. Uh, yeah. So that's just a breeder filter. If you don't want to, uh, you can treat your own water by doing that. Um, We've been using one of these for years and just replace the filter when it's on the schedule. A lot of places now are having this. This is filtered water and UV treated, I think, ozone treated water that you just put your bottle up there and fill it up. A lot of universities and public places have got water like that now. Um, and so there are ways that you can get to the water. <laughs> uh, other things that you can do around water, these are just kind of things. I mentioned water is one of the biggest uses. Uh, among them, industry and, and agriculture are big too. But water, a lot of use on lawns, as we discussed, and it's really not beneficial. It's, it's beneficial to our appearances in terms of the lawn. Like Bob said, who is the right time? You're just wasting it. Like Vern said, what else are you washing off your lawn? Um, it's things that people think about in terms of your lawn. Well, can you have a no mow mango? Cut your grass. In your bank. Uh, do your neighbors care if your grass is taller? Sure. Now, my neighbor right behind us, his stuff was getting up well over a foot, and I thought he was going to buy a goat or something, but finally, it finally it. But it totally, it totally um, stalled out his lawnmower, but eventually did cut his lawn. Um, or you can do something else. You don't have to have lawn. You can do other things. I'm going to show you a picture. So. Or just cut it to four inches instead of shorter. <laughs> There's a picture of a house in Ontario. Um, in 2022, they had this lawn, nice lawn, three fire fire hundred and twenty. And they replaced their lawn with this kind of a, a wildflower garden for pollinators. Now, what are pollinators? Who's yeah. Bees, butterflies. Bees, butterflies. And why do we need them? For our, our existence. <laughs> to fertilize everything that grows. You have to, anytime a plant grows, it has to be fertilized for it to, to generate seeds, to grow and continue to get seeds. And so bees, butterflies, anything like that. And if you put a lot of pesticides and stuff like that down, spray against those things, you're killing them. This is, I don't want to say it's extreme, I don't know. You don't have to mow it. I guess it's one of them. Um, but there are all kinds of things that you can do. Um, there's a place that I know of, they have no lawn at all, they have gravel. And of course, it has to go to weeds, gravel once more. So, anyways, so let's talk about water. What are things that you think you could do? In terms of just water, what you have, your water uses, what are some things that you think you could do? And you want to write down a couple of things on your post-it notes? Just write down a thing or two. Did you get post notes back? I think you did. <laughs> okay, let's talk about energy. The biggest uses for energy in North America are heating, cooling, and transportation. This is all our comfort, right? It's funny, we lived in Charlotte, North Carolina for a number of years. And uh, I, I laughed at this, our kids came to us and said, hey, can we go to the mall? Why? Can I go shopping? No, the air conditioning is colder than home. <laughs> what? So we were very careful of keeping that gap between the heating, cooling, and stuff, so that we could actually not use too much energy. Even here, I'll show you some little tricks we do here. Uh, we wear sweaters and stuff like that at home. It's perfectly okay. We hard to keep warm. I'm not telling you anything else. <laughs> we have four kids, so it's okay. <laughs> so, so the question is: Is there something you can do with your comfort zone? So guess what? I can change my thermostat setting, so I'm not cold in the summer. I'm not really hot in the winter. That's all energy use. That's all carbon footprint. It's all carbon footprint. Other things you can do, I stole this sign from somewhere, is there are other things that you can do to get around. I love to bike. And I was laughing when somebody said, hey, you should throw your bike in the van and then drive to this park 30 miles away and go for a 10 mile bike ride. Why don't I bike three miles first? And that's right. I, mean, I know that my friend Paul Berkeley and Becky say, You don't have to do that. Here's where to bike. You're very good at the bike paths. I'm a little less good at that. 
But think about what could, what else could you do? What could you do to use other modes of transportation? I used to drive to a restaurant all the time, just this one particular restaurant, and now I bike in most weather. Uh, I get thrown off a little when it snowed so much, but I would probably bike today, Jordan. Isn't it cold? Yeah, I got a coat. I got a hat. It's okay. Ice is mostly gone. So think of things that you could do differently. Again, we're talking about changing your behavior. One other stuff, this, I, I, this was surprising to me. Um, because one of the things that uses most, one of the most fuel on a car, stop and go stuff. To tell you, we're talking to Jack Rabbit starts. So stop and go stuff uses the most. And when you look at engineers that design these traffic circuits, actually, you don't stop. You slow down and look and pay attention. You know, I hate them. Everybody's different, it's okay. You don't have to like them. <laughs> but what they found is that it decreases the number of crashes by over 50% in these couple of years when they were looking at it. And this friend of mine said, well, it's actually just called the incidents and the injuries are less than it's just trading car pain, right? <laughs> I run into your car for this trading thing. <laughs> so people are funnier than that. But engineering wise, they make sense. They do. Now, how you navigate them. That's a learning process. <laughs> uh, how about, <laughs> yeah, you can't do this in our neighborhood, but you can do this. You can get yourself a rack like that, as far as I know. Nobody's complaining about it. Why can't you do that in the neighborhood? It's a little loud. I don't know. Really? It's a little loud, bro. Is that like uh, the homeowners? Um, no, that's just a township. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I know we were doing the trial. They were strong as a whole. Well, I used to have one like that. Well, but then we redid our yard and then it had to come out. So I was say, keep using it until they see if somebody comes by. But anyways, <laughs> I don't want to belabor you with all that stuff. But you can step by these and you can do the same thing and dry your, have your laundry dry by the sun and wind. Where can you buy those? I've never seen one like if that. You're no, right. Right, right. If you look on Amazon or, or eBay or something like that, I think we might have bought yeah, the two small ones. Sorry? Sorry? Oh, you tell me? Yeah, I said, oh, I said, oh, I, said <laughs> I have. <laughs> I, I don't know. I have a smaller one like that that I use in the house. Yeah. Or just a couple of this and that, yeah, you yeah. know. Um, but I don't have one that looks like airplane. <laughs> I have a swing on our Jack. I hang my blouses on the rack and oh. swing during the summer. Oh, I've never had anybody say anything. So what's that called? Thinking and doing, right? Very good. Oh, yeah, great. That's so one. nobody, it's pretty, pretty can see in our backyard. They're snipping because <laughs> so we can see. I can't even see the neighbors next door. So they shouldn't be looking. Yeah. But the idea here is like, there are alternatives to using this metal box that that is a tremendous energy sink. Now, one of the things to think about, you should open your metal box when it's cold and just put your hand in and see what it feels like. Why is it cold? The air comes back in from the vent. There's a vent in there. You're letting your nice, heated, warm air out of the house and cold air is coming back in. Does that make sense? So the suggestion is make sure you keep your door closed if you can. It's a little trick to do. So there are things that you can do without having to increase your carbon footprint and keep burning energy. Um, we get laughed at by other countries for stuff like this. Because, uh, I mean, all, all we're doing here, and again, let me come back to this. I don't care if you have one or use one. But I still do this until my shoulders almost hurt. It's part of my workout. But other countries, they say, oh, you Americans. All you guys do is boil your beach from here to there. Guess what? They're still over there. I don't know. Again, I'm not judging anybody. But you can think about it and say, what else could I do? If you make this part of your fitness, we don't have a snowball either. That's a little tougher on that car. <laughs> but I can pay my wonderful wife, Shelves. <laughs> well, those those uh, leaf blowers, you know, those uh, people that have lawn services and stuff, and they're cutting on main roads, and they're just they're blowing it right up to this telegraph, and yep. you know yep. all these main roads. Uh, his his brother, they were driving down 
they live on the other side of town, so I don't know what road it was on. They were blowing stuff, and a rock or something flew and hit the window and broke the window, and my sister-in-law sitting in the passenger seat wow. and shattered her car yeah. window. Yeah. And I think he stopped and talked to him and said, hey, you just blew this side. He goes, that ain't my problem. He just kept going on. Okay, and he I don't didn't know. even care. Yeah. He's like, how do you know it was me? And he just kept on going. And so... Yeah. It's another thing to think about. I mean, we, we pay all kinds of fees to go to exercise clubs and stuff like that. And maybe if you burn a few more calories, it's getting some things. Yeah, just think. I think you do a better job, right? Uh, yeah, because when you're blowing, you're blowing, and then the wind blows and all of that. And again, all you're doing is moving it from here to there, right? So so they're still over there. You still have to. And you can take them up as you go, too, and then. Get them to the garden. Get them to the garden and roll the tow them in. If if you if you have a rotor tow and if they're good for your garden, not everything. Have a shovel, you don't need a rotor. Tow. Not everything biodegrades, right? Oaks are not good for that. Walnuts are not really right. good for that. Either. So it's a matter of then how what do you want to do? But the whole idea is just keep thinking. Don't stop thinking. What's the best thing to do with this stuff? Should I do this or should I do that? Should I rotor till it? Should I dig it into my garden? Just keep thinking what you're doing. The previous screen you said mow the lawn at four inches. If you mow it four inches, you could run through those and they're going to be part of the cement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, th th this is this is notorious. I run around some people's houses and say, Hey, go in the front, why do you run it? No judgment, right? <laughs> <laughs> I run around on their own house. Well, there's nobody in here. Why are the lights on? Right. Let me shut this one up. It, again, it's just thinking. Gee, put your thinking cap on. There's an old song by Bob Lowe, the kind of a country swing song. When you leave Amarillo, shut out the light. When you leave the kitchen, shut out the light. When you leave the bedroom, shut out the lights. If all this energy is, is this waste. So is there anything that you can say, hey, here's something I learned by what Heinz taught me that I can change. I can do something different. <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to get your post-it notes up here. I'm not going to read any of them. I'm just going to gather and I want you to make some decisions on it. So, energy, let me go talk about air. <laughs> There's a ton of stuff I can talk about air, but I said, I'm only going to be here for another half an hour, Marx. Mm -hmm. So, what can we do? Then the question is, like, what's your carbon footprint? Think about what do you think your carbon footprint is. What could it be? What should it be? And there are all kinds of things that we can do with our air. Um, I love these, these garbage trucks are really cool. It says here, think green, think clean. And we are burning on clean natural gas. Well, natural gas is just about as bad as carbon dioxide. Well, one of the biggest sources of natural gas is on the ass. What is the biggest source of natural gas it's just getting into the air? Cows. when they oh. pass natural gas, <laughs> it goes into the air. It's methane. A lot of the wells where we're getting natural gas are leaking like crazy. Well, companies that are wells are leaking. And it's really hard to detect and it's really hard to fix. There are other sources of natural gas. I mean, we, you can take a look at all the stacks to see when you go and pass, well, trash more there. Stack, that's just natural gas coming off the decomposing stack. And of course, man, why don't we trap that in your house? How do you trap natural gas? It's a tough thing to catch, compress, and ship, and put in a pipeline. That's a lot of money to do. You can do it. Oh, well, the, the energy you yeah. needed to do that, to compress that, and to ship it, it has to be clean. Is more than yeah. what the value of what, what comes out yeah. of it. Yeah. It's, it's a, a, a lost game, a lost leader game. That's a lost one. Yeah. So it makes no sense to do it, and that's why they don't. Uh, people talk right now about using hydrogen to drive cars and stuff like that. Hydrogen makes hydrogen easy out of water. And then what do you do? Hydrogen is the lightest element there is. It just floats away. Hydrogen goes through metals, some metals. So how do you keep it in your container? So once you make hydrogen, you have to compress it. You have to ship it. And then you have to have a vehicle that will burn it. All a bunch of not yet, not yet, not yet. Oh, we would have had a vehicle that ran on hydrogen. Never sold it. So, anyways, good idea. Let's keep doing this. But we shouldn't pretend too much how friendly we are. Air. Anybody have any questions of air? What could you possibly do with it? Your air. Pure plan. Let's say I just have to produce pieces of carbon footprint. 
Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, seriously, there's there's what kind of us here. What what we're gonna do is if we cut out all of it, it wouldn't be saving as much as Taylor Swift used in her jet to get from Atlanta to <laughs> wherever. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean seriously. Well, Taylor Swift would do that if it was not for us and the former lifestyle. If we would stop, we, and I, as I say, we in a different project, if we would stop supporting her successes in the position, say, hey, get off your jet. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Two of my kids and one of my granddaughters went to her concert last year. You know, yeah. I mean, if I don't get off and lose it all. And when she was done with her concert, she got in her private jet and flew to Pittsburgh. Yeah. yeah. But so you're right. I mean, we read that all over the place. It's not just Taylor Swift. We can pick on her because that's all over the internet. Works. She, 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 she. What about all the other people that do all this stuff? One of the biggest farcical events was this energy conference, this global energy conference they had in Dubai, was it? Yeah. Where all those people come from? All over the world flying first class jets, private jets. We're going to talk about energy. Anyway. The question is, so what can we do about air? Think about that. I want to talk about stuff. Anybody got stuff here? I'm wearing stuff. Yeah, we all got stuff. In most Western societies, we are gross over consumers of the stuff we want, and that's stuff we do. Oh, are you going to go and preach to us about needing and wanting stuff? Yeah. Not preaching it anyway. It's not my job. The fastest growing land for century in Africa and Chile. What? We send them our stuff. <laughs> well, we, we, you don't understand. It's a killer here. All clothing is future land for. What? We, 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 what are you talking about? I just bought these cons for you. By the way, these, these are like eBay cons for 20 bucks. They're okay. I'll wear these until they're worn out. Even when I teach at universities, the students go crazy. Wow, ah, the balloons are those funny laces again. <laughs> it, it all winds up in a landfill somewhere. And you don't understand. I love it when people say, you don't understand. Well, when you're an intelligent person, that's not the most. You don't understand. Well, you know, once I'm tired of wearing it, then I take it to a good rule. So I'm Where's it going now? Uh, somebody else buys it and wears it for a Or where's it going now? And then that comes back to Google or Salvation Earth. Where's it with that? Eventually, it goes to these places where they make rags and send us bags and bags of rags back, or it goes to their land. <laughs> we, we buy a box of rags from these companies. <clears throat> so, the suggestion there is wear the stuff until it's almost worn out as much as you can. And like, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, the last time I gave this talk, I showed somebody my shirt and said, I think my collar and my sleeves are just about certain and fray. Does that bother anybody? My car afraid? Does that bother you? Danny, does that bother you? Are you going to think less of me and say, I got such a cheap shirt? <laughs> Why doesn't he go buy himself a better shirt? <laughs> it's selfish, sir. I had to laugh when I read this. I just looked it up. The average American man has a dozen pairs of shoes. The average woman has over two dozen pairs of shoes. Alas, that I counted, the average American man has two feet. The average American woman is two feet. So why do we have all the shoes? You don't understand. You don't understand. Okay, let's talk. Because it's a style. Okay, so you're almost going in the direction of fast fashion. You guys know fast fashion is? You ever heard that? It's crazy right now. They design and make clothing out of like lower class fabrics that disintegrate after like three washers. So where does it go then? It goes in somebody's landfill set. But it looked cool the first few times you wore it, and then you went to the laundry and came up and you fell off or something. It, it's called fast fashion. They're designing it that way. And of course, you can select fibers to do that. So that's just, yep, exactly. That's the word. That's the older word that they use, plant obsolescence. It's just really excessive in that, in that particular thing. So the thing to think about here is what do you need, not what do you want, and how do you get what you need? That's the thing to think about. That's really the, the challenge to think about. <laughs> um, okay, let me get back to this one here. Okay, you get, I mean, we see these things on TV where the storage wars or whatever they call them. 
So over 20 Americans have storage space, run the storage space. It's a $40 billion business to rent storage space. Over 2 million square foot of storage space. I am not passing judgment on anybody. We learned when we moved to Michigan, the garages are not for your cars. <laughs> I laughed too when we learned that. <laughs> but I didn't laugh because it was fun. I mean, we, we get our cars in the garage all the time. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's supposed to be where they live, isn't it? Um, we're, we're, it's stuck. We got stuck. And when we get our garages and our closets and everything full, what do we do? We go here. We put it somewhere else, right? So then the challenge is oh, this is a sad story. You know, if you can't pay for your, your house, you get evicted, and then all of your stuff winds up on the curb. I saw this and talked to somebody, they said, man, it's a total sad story. Yes. Yeah, great. Someday all of this will be yours. Great, thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> too much stuff. Yeah, way too much stuff. Well, that's why that's what he's always said. I said we need to kind of get rid of some of our stuff. <laughs> it's like why? And I said because we need to have more space. Space eagles. No, that's what the kids are for. When we're gone, then they can take care of our stuff. <laughs> 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 Wonderful point. I love it. I, I have been taught this by people that have retired and looked at their stuff when they retired. They said, you know, your kids don't want your place, dishes, your books. Oh, no, you're right. I, I, I want none of it. I can't you know, I have a big dumpster in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going to go in the dumpster. Because they're not going they're not going to save anything. They're you not going to say, oh, mom, really love this thing. I'm going to save it. No, right in the dumpster. We've had the second dumpster in the driveway right beside our house. And I don't know what renovations they're doing, but the thing is full of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And everything. So, so that, that's the thing to learn is the less stuff you acquire, the less stuff you have to babysit. Now, there's a, there's a gag there. I talked to you guys about being a musician. It's kind of a, a guitarist gag. When does a guitarist have enough guitars? <laughs> when you don't have any more playing space. When, it, when it's one more. <laughs> when it's one more. <laughs> right, so. So I'm giving my guitar as a way to look like my granddaughter and you know stuff like that. Just bring them on his eye. I gotta go buy another guitar. You have to buy another guitar. You know, wind up here somehow. Okay, so now I'd like to talk about what can we do with some of this stuff. And I'd like to play a game with you. Actually, and to do that, I brought my recycle box, which much of what's a blue box. Oh, this one's actually green. And I want to help. Why don't you help me sort this into garbage? Or I can actually put in recently. And uh, so I want you to help me with this. And I actually have a list of stuff. And I don't know, Sandy, can you help me with this? Can you take a look at this list here and help me decide where to put stuff? Most of you know where this stuff goes already. Anyways, so it's either going to go into the green box, which is recycle, or go into here and kind of work in the garbage thing. So where does this thing go? Recycling. What if it wasn't rinsed out? If it wasn't rinsed out, then it goes in the garbage. So it's got to be rinsed out. What are these? Garbage. Well, well, I'm going to ask you, what are these things? Styrofoam. Actually, they're not. The word styrofoam is a, is a trademark of the Dow Chemical Company for the blue foam polystyrene foam that you put on walls. This, I should say. this isn't blue and it doesn't go walls. So this is what's called a foamed styrofoam or foamed polystyrene cup. And where does this go? This is a piece of urethane foam. Garbage. How about this? The plastic? What numbers on the bottom? I can't see it. Well, then we don't know. Well, it's plastic. We just put it in recycle. BT, recycle. Yeah. What did you yep. Now I'm gonna show you this this is a, a package. This was good when I ate it this week. Uh, where does it go? <laughs> That's recycle. 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 Okay. How about the thing with the cheese or bitch? You've done this before. And, and it's funny, it's different. It's different. It tells you here on the side. It says the paper box is recycled. The pouch is not. Is it because the pouch is uh, like a, a foil? Yeah, exactly. Punch it like a clock. Okay. How about this? Over the bottom. Crack. Why? 
The bigger thing is this came from Leo's, which meant it had food. And food contact is not going in recycle. Oh, yeah. Okay. How about that word? Recycle. Recycle. Back to the farm where you got your farm fresh air. This is garbage, right? We talked about that. How about this? At one time, how about how about how about this? Number on it? Well, you can see it better than I can. No, I can't. It's still five. No. Five probably? No. It shows that you can recycle. Oh, yeah. It shows that you can recycle, but I think in service management, they don't recycle five. What does it say on there about containers like this? Can you see anything with that? I'll tell you in a second what this is. Always recycle plastic bottles and containers. Yeah. So, it takes oh. me a while. We found this in the, in the street this morning. That's me. That's recycle. Recycle. Um, this is recycle. I gave you one. I'm going to take the one that was burned. I was actually going to reuse this and fill it with water. I have a question. Man. You don't need too much stuff, clever. On the bottle. Yeah. Should you, does it matter if you remove the cap, take the labels off of these items that you're putting in the recycle? Does that have any kind of bearing? I don't it? think they differentiate. Now, I'll, I'll they just save you a whole lot of energy because I've over there just taking yeah. that, <laughs> it, like, oh, wasted all kinds of water. Right. Washing that it energy. Out. Right. So just, yeah. Like, now, go crunch in there. This, this actually hard. This, this is pretty hard to crunch. Normally, I just crunch it down like this. Again, I don't have this on the stand this morning. You're welcome. But, yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you a story about Germany because I connect with people all over the world. Um, they have this problem too. A friend of mine lives in Munich in part of some kind of water consortium. He said, Well, you know, the bottles we want to recycle, but we really want the caps because this has got some additives when they process them when they blow mold the bottle. They're not really good for recycling, but we want the caps. And in fact, in Germany, you pay a, you pay a, a deposit on bottles of water. Oh. Like you do on here. Here. Ooh. You think that would sell here? They're trying it. It's an energy it should be light free. Yep. <laughs> they should try and do it. A toilet paper roll. Hey, look at that. That's one of those toilet paper things. Oh, oh, oh. Recycle, right? Right. How about a milk chart? Recycle. 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 We will pretend this is recycled, okay? This is a polyethylene. It's a pretty simple thing to recycle. This one here comes from all of you. If you go into all of you on your way out, they've got a great big placard on the side of the wall. You can take a picture of that, how environmentally friendly they are. It's actually a pretty cool story. They do a lot of neat stuff. Now, this one here, I would use for something else first. Right. I would use it as a garbage can. Then I garbage bag out. But don't worry, I'm taking this home for <laughs> How about this? Now we talked about this. Now you know what this is? This came with packaged meat in it, right? Like sandwich oh, meat. Right. So what is it now? It's a bowl. It's a bowl for leftovers. I have food in it. Put your nuts and bolts in the garage. In there. I just wash them and then I put leftovers in it. So we got about seven use. You guys are so smart. You know what I do with this? Whenever I go for lunch or dinner, I think of this. Because in our culture, our portions are bigger than we right. need. Not bigger than we want, but they're bigger than we need. And it's one of those peculiar cultural things. If you go to eat in a fancy restaurant in Europe, and they say, how was your meal? Oh, the food was so good. If you go to a restaurant here, I don't know, last restaurant, okay. what do they say? I'm full. It's a dipstick. <laughs> okay. 
So I take one of these hooks and I'll because I don't want to get more than a shitty. So what do I do? Well, that's a good idea because then you're not using that styrofoam container. Yeah, really like, Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> no, I, went, I got all the shit. People say, like, What are you bringing this to the restaurant? What are you for? I said, Yeah, I, I said, I'm smarter than your average bear. Smarter than your average bear. Okay, don't worry, we're coming back to the you're only taking it, you're only using it for like 10, 10 minutes. Yeah. And it's not like brand new. And if you pay money to get that, right? Hey. Okay, let's talk about some other things. So, question. Yes. The plastic bags. The quarter ones? Yeah. 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 So, they say not to put them in recycling because it clogs up the machinery. And when it goes through shredder, shredders and all that, it gets bound up inside and it causes more trouble than what it's worth. Right. So the better thing to do is when I think Nina suggests is take it back to the store. Yeah, take right. it to the store. Now, there's a thing exactly the same thing with straws. Now in in Canada, they banned single use straws in restaurants and stuff like that. And I thought, well, what's wrong with these straws? I mean, I, I worked in the polymer industry for like 30 years. What's wrong with the straws? They put some kind of a processing agent in the polymer hopefully that they put in the straws, and it's just hard to get into the machine. You're right. So the better thing to do is to do what Nina suggests. Take it back to their boxes if they have them. If they don't, what can you do? You remember I had a thing down here on the water? I said, ask them and say, hey, why don't you guys get a box for this stuff? Why don't you guys get a box for these things? Well, you understand. You're right, I don't. So you're right, Bob, you're right. But I'm going to put it there because I'm reasonable. Anyway. So the idea is to refuse, get rid of stuff. You gotta wait till our stuff for you. You just refuse it. Nah, I'm not gonna take a bottle of wine ever. So I, you know, I brought my little church bottles out of use for a year. And you know what happens? Um, I've broken a couple of these. Um, I left it on the roof of my car when I was leaving my state one day. Didn't have to do the ride. <laughs> it was a short ride. But notorious that I am, I've had this coffee cup for a long time. And now, it, after COVID, you can go back into places like Starbucks and say, hey, you can put it right in. Yeah, but sir, yeah, but nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and then they finally comply. I'll say, oh, I'm going to go over to the bakeries. What? We will, we'll put it in there for you. Okay, I'm going to show you more stuff. You guys are kind of. One of the things I learned by living in some other places. Humor is a really funny twist on the language. When we lived in Germany, I felt like I almost fit in. If somebody told a joke and I'm not the right time. <laughs> yeah, you know, like if somebody tells a joke and you wait too long, it's like, that didn't work. <laughs> but you really, and if you tell a joke and they laugh at the right time, then you really didn't. So I'm going to show you some stuff. Uh, my daughter in, one of my kids in Florida, she doesn't hoard stuff. She collects stuff. This is her brain. So I did her. We showed her. What? Are you crazy? Um, yeah, there's a piano at the curb. What should I do with it? Does it have wheels? Can you push it home? Sure. There it is. Wow. They have like a sun porch in the south of Sonoma Bay. I think. Is that how you say it? No. Uh, all this stuff found at the curb. Uh, this workbench in her garage. The dust she has. All found at the curb. Now, this is kind of my story. So if you think, if you're thinking, stuff appears at your curbside. You say, I mean, one day I brought home, sometimes in my exercise program, I kind of lift some weights. Somebody had, it must've been like 300 pounds of dumbbell plates. I only brought home two 20 pound plates. That's all I could carry. <laughs> and when I, next time we walked by, they were gone. Oh what is this stuff here? We have a little garden about the size of you know, a tiny little garden here in Michigan. I'm very want to pick up a garden about the size of twice the size of this one. Bean, beans grow up holes. This is a hockey stick and so that. <laughs> right? Yeah. And this one, there are Christmas tree from last year. Got all the brush. This is in the office of a professor at the University of Windsor. Three hockey sticks taped together, put hooks on, things like this coat on. Very cool. Uh -huh. uh, I mentioned I'm kind of a guitarist. This kid took this young man, took a cutting board like this, and built this Stratocaster kind of copy guitar. 
pretty cool. And you, you would buy this body from a company in Warmoth for about $400. Recycling. Now, I gotta talk about other stuff that goes back. Food kind of stuff. <clears throat> Whether you're gonna, it's gonna join the regional organic waste thing, right across the river, food guys. I, I haven't heard any of this stuff here. Maybe it's coming somehow, I don't know. They're gonna join this thing called Organic Waste Project 2025 Diversion. They're gonna divert the landfill into doing other stuff with it. Now, what does this mean? I'm gonna explain it to you in terms of this, this little municipality up here, George and Bay and Amy. Triangle time. Not even as big as breasts. One. And they have three cans. When you pick up your trash. They have a blue box when ours are green, but they have a blue box for recycling stuff. They have this thing here that you put all your organic stuff in. Food scraps. And it goes to a thing called a biodigester. It does compost. It costs some money, but they do it because they say we want to be environmentally friendly. When you take out your bags of trash, you have to switch a stick on it or they won't pick it up. Hmm. And you have to pay for this at the post office, which means if you're paying like $4 to throw out a bag of trash, you may think, mm, uh, maybe I should make less trash. Maybe I can recycle stuff. Now, as I said, when you're going to go ahead and start doing this too, her, her, none of us here. But there's a company in Detroit named NAFCO. I can't imagine anybody's heard of it. One of my former students works there. These guys take the Detroit sewage and they concentrate and sell fertilizer. You can buy it. The Lorganite is is waste from the city of Milwaukee. Yeah. It's a and these guys, they, NEPCO has, I think, they're like four or five locations across the United States. The guy's an engineer, and I said, man, like, what's that like working there? And he said, it was getting messed up. I don't know if it's the same place, but right across the water treatment plant on Jefferson it is it's a uh, they make fertilizer, yeah. but it's for agricultural that's purposes. It. And they had, from my understanding, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I heard. And they had a heck of a time proving that or waste that people produce, they could convert it into uh, fertilizer for agriculture. That's what I thought that did. I think I think that's these guys. I've been to the plant tour. It's right beside the water treatment plant. Yeah, yeah. They, right under, it's right across the street. Yeah, um, I'm pretty street. sure that that would be these guys. Then. Okay. So let me talk some more about food. Let me go back to that. Just think about that again. I remember we talked about toilet uh, paper and poop. There it goes. <laughs> again, actually, expert engineer took a class from me. Wanted to work in there, and, and I had a Zoom meeting with him. He said. This is so cool. I'm like saving the world. Well, maybe not. <laughs> it's a different way to say it that way. But the company is there. <clears throat> okay, food. We just talked about food going into that recycling thing and meat for the little community in this area. A third of the food weight that is produced is waste. And it's about a trillion dollars worth of food. That's a big number. That's a big number. Um, when you look at your food, I can get out that, that thing of butter. It doesn't say expired. It never says expired. Ever. Also, it's best before. And you ever look at your. This, this is the quality control test at home. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, uh, it. This one here, I'm not, I don't know what it's expired. It doesn't top. expire. It's up at the top by the cap. Well, there it is. January 24th. Well, this one, this one's gone. I use it. But the idea is it doesn't expire. Then it's a matter of deciding can I still use it safely? And that's a decision. <laughs> but most, many, I shouldn't say most people, many people just want to say, oh, man, I use it for I go in the trash. Think about it, really? Bake some pancakes or something with the uh, expired milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the milk is. That's buttermilk, right? <laughs> that, now, that's, that's, that's becoming buttermilk, right? That's what it's becoming. It's becoming buttermilk. Okay, and we would pay good money to buy a quart of buttermilk. Yeah, but most of those dates on there are not the actual time that it'll go bad. It's the oh, only time that it'll actually go bad, but it's kind of a marketing thing, and they know people are going to look at it and they're going to say, most people who don't think about it, oh, it's oh. no good, and I'm just going to throw it out, and then they have to go buy more again, yep. and it's still perfect. It's like how it's fashion. I heard canned goods. They they can last for several years after that date, but 
Only if you open it and it doesn't look or smell wonky, you yeah. know. The point is perfect. That's exactly the point. It's not when that date arrives, it doesn't mean it's come back. All it means it's best before that. They will guarantee best before. After that, hey, all right. You're on your own. <laughs> yeah, then it's a pressure. Not really. You take your risk, right? It's up to you. You decide if you want to use it or not. This morning, I don't think it was this charge of milk, but we, we made muffins. Banana muffins with some sour milk. Souring milk, I should say. But we're okay. We use or you can just throw it off. Everybody should have some kind of burger or something. Huh. This is not the container beside our house, but you know, been there, done that. It, it's, we are just notorious for this. I got all this stuff. I'm not going to do that here with the container beside you. So, talking about stuff. Now, what can you not recycle? It's my challenge to you. It's not going to recycle the pipe or make a big pot. I got a box full of stuff here that you tell me I can recycle. What can you not recycle? Think hard. What would it take? This this lady, Laura Lynch on CBC, she's got a fantastic show called What on Earth. She talked about all these environmental issues, carbon footprint, nuclear energy. It's a wonderful show to listen to. She says the greatest hindrances to this stuff. Apathy, greedy, and selfishness. And I'm gonna put it in time. Yeah, he laughs me. You think about it if you look back? Yeah, I care about my neighborhood, don't you? And then they look at me like, oh, well, you don't understand. I have one of these bags. My spouse and I go for a walk almost every morning in three or four miles. And then we go. You gotta know the neighborhood better than I I have one of these in my coat pocket. Oh, look. Look, bear. Look at these bottles on the street. Crunch it up and take it out. Was our recycle bin? Yellow fake trash. You must have picked that one, right? You would pick up other people's trash. Yeah, I care, don't you? Well, our one friend, he does that when he goes to different beaches and stuff. He picks up stuff that is washed up out of the water, or people leave it on the beach or whatever. Amazing what you just said. This is a walk. This wasn't locked here, but locally, I mean, you can take a look at this thing. There's money in here. Like these are cans that have deposit. Coke bottles, but people are throwing money away. But the other stuff like Tim Warren, that's not useful. That's not recycled like water. But I picked that stuff up and actually, this was a bag. This had all kind of knapsack bag I found on the, on the side of the road. And I thought I'd pick up the stuff on my bike. I actually did this one on my bike. Sort of neighborhood. Oh, what? Yeah. Fantastic books and earth, but a few of them are, uh, they're over that coming in. But they're even better ones. I forgot the name of the two that, that you suggested to me. One uh, was Trash Planet or something like that. Garbage Planet. Garbage Planet. Mm -hmm. And the other one was this one you Anyways, there are books here that could tell you all kinds of stuff. Um, but I just, you know, think, don't hurt yourself. Use you your brain. So, all kinds of things we can do. Think about your energy at home, your transit. Is there a better way to get around? Is there a better way to do it with somebody else? Like carpooling, we used to call that. I don't know what we call it now. Carpooling, bike, walking on a road, water, walk a little. Public transit. We have a challenge. We don't really have public transit for anything. It's too bad. Living in Europe, like, why would you pay gasoline to go somewhere? Travel, stay vacations, one of are getting kind of boring and all the We all want to be. Taylor Swift. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. What else can you do? Uh, vegetables actually are better to grow than meat in terms of carbon footprint. Um, just buy smarter, keep water, clothes, and stuff. Just keep your coat where it's up. And then just speak up and talk about some stuff like that. Now, I have a, a book to give away on your water footprint. Um, but I, usually I would do this by like taking business cards and making a drawing, but I don't know. I'm going to ask this question. This is kind of a tricky question. I gave a talk this week at Wayne State, and I gave books in it. And I brought like three books on, on leadership and management, bettering yourself. And I said, Guys, want some books? Crickets. <laughs> no. No, we don't want your books. Oh, I was certainly shuddering. What? Don't you guys read? No. We don't. Why not? Don't you want a good start? We watch, we watch Ted Dogs. We don't read. 
books. Anyways, I have this book here. It's all about your law enforcement. It's laughable in some of the stuff you would see in here. Um, you know, again, it says here that people walk great distances. Who, who would like to read this book and maybe pass it on to somebody else? I will. You will? Okay. Yeah, he's not raising his hand. I'll read it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing that you can do. And when I give a book away, I almost always, I'm afraid to say always because it, it's like it's a promise. I almost always say, read it, pass it on to somebody else. Have you seen what he just did? He just got rid of his stuff and gave it to you. Thank you for that compliment. <laughs> and thank you for that. The library accepts donation. So no, 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 no. I'll just throw that plug out there. I saw that box <laughs> outside. And I have a box of some, some stuff. Yeah. And books. Now, and I'm like, look at you could have brought it over here. Yeah, you can. I have a box of donations. This box here was full of books. <laughs> I have to get to bring it here. For this purpose. Now, I want you to think about some of this. I'm going to show you this a goofy little crazy trick at home. Our, this is our front door here. When we close that, we have like a, a glass windowed screen door there. When we close that in the winter and the sun shines in here, it goes up to 130 to 150 degrees. But you can't touch it with your hand. It's so hot. So what can I do with that? I'd crack it open, catch with a higher so to our second story. Questions in the bedroom. Does it change your gas bill? Probably not. But I can feel better, man. <laughs> <laughs> Try and come on. This is a restaurant in Dearborn. They are growing their herbs on the wall. What? Are you kidding? Now, these things are all containers. They're growing herbs on the wall because there's enough light in there to grow stuff and there's enough heat in there already. Some other thing. So what I'd like you to do on your post notes is right now what I call three by two and two goals. Write down three things that you think you can do. And if you would be so kind in that, you can actually stick them up on here. Don't worry, I'm not judging anybody, like I said. You can't do much, but we can all do something. Write down three things that you think you can change in your behavior over the next three months. Then tell three people in the room and then just do it. And I'd like you to do that. And once you got a couple of points on this, please bring them up there. I only have one more picture to show you. Does anybody know this restaurant? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what it is? It's shipping containers. About 20 shipping containers, all passed together. It's a pretty good flat way to house homeless people. Shipping containers. Did you like it when you went there? I haven't been there. I've seen it on TV. Okay. It's on my list, but. Yeah. Uh, I oh, there was that house built. Oh, um, that Where's that house? Uh, it's, it's in Detroit, so I, I went there. I was right there, and I went there for, for like a dinner. Can you put up your last previous slide, please? Yeah, sure. There, yeah. Now, my memory's short. I'll, I'll tell you a story about that um, that happened when you're over 30 years old. Right. Um, I go back to this picture here. I went for dinner there, and I asked the, the Person waiting on us, it's all uh, you bring your name. Well, here you have to read this QR code. Yeah, huh. and, uh, well, not with the phone I have, <laughs> sir. I don't know if you're in order, but I had to go one of my buddies to order for me, and he was nice after the day. So I'm nice. I'm nice. It worked really well for me, anyways. <laughs> anybody have any questions? Once you get some of this stuff scribbled together, again, if you put them up there, we can just kind of. Talk to somebody about it and say, this is something I want to do. This is not a the one direction show and tell. Yeah. Does Canada does winter still ship a lot of its trash over to our dumps over here? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say winter. I don't want to say winter. Okay. If you say Canada, that's a different well, a lot of it came from, from Toronto and so all over the place. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't see as many trucks as I used to. I, know. I don't know. I think they still do. They may be disguised in different ways. Um, every day, any day you go on telegraph between West Road and Carlton, you'll see those semis going back and forth. Mm -hmm. all the so, all the time. so that's a good way for Canada to reduce its, yes. its yes. Their sure. footprint by shipping it over here. And we're yeah. stupid enough to take yeah. it over here and um, fill our stuff up. Well, it's where do we send our stuff? It's all about money. We send our to Asia, right? A lot of us. Our trucks up all. We used to go to Asia, doesn't look so much now. But and I, what I can't understand there to me, it, it makes no sense. But somebody's making some deals there to say, hey, I got space for your trash, and here's the contract. 
but then they tell us that this dump is only going to last for so many years. Yep. And then we'll have to build another one, but yet we're filling it up with trash from from somebody who's got a lot more land than we do that they could produce their own dump. Heinz, you knew, knew me back before I moved out to Grass Lake. Um, my life changed quite a bit in a lot of this stuff. Every little thing that I have to pay for to get rid of mm -hmm. would go to recycling. Paper, I burn a lot. Yeah, I am, uh, you know, having fires, that type of thing. Um, food scraps, it would be costly for me to get rid of food scraps. Yep. So that goes all the way out back for the animals to pick. Sure. Yep. When I butcher a deer, all that goes right to the same pile of wood. They know where to get it. It's not by the house. We just sell them all racks and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. important to go ahead and uh, look at it that way responsibly. Yeah, that's the spend as less fuel as you can to yeah. get rid of that stuff, but then also operate yeah. reducing zeros. Yeah. 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 When I designed my house, I put, what you just said. I put windows all on the south side of our house. Our our furnace shuts off in the middle of the night, and, or you know, in the morning, and then it doesn't run all day. So what is this gentleman doing? So, never stop thinking. Right? Always there's quite a few things that you came up with that I could be doing here. So, more stuff. Now, I, I have a couple more giveaways. I still have some bottles here for somebody who wants some bottles, but these are kind of more environmental fun. This is a Walmart bag. <laughs> I, I assume that you're all using a lot of these kind of bags. Yes. Yeah. yeah that was <laughs> well, this one here has on the side, uh, I used to be a plastic bottle. The Walmart bag. Right. Um, I'm, I'm ashamed to say I bought it on Ferry. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a guy in the store and I had one of these. He was a walk through store and he was buying all uh, spices. I said, Sure, where'd you get that bag? I said, well, Let me read it to you. It says Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid because I was most of these American. Anyway, so, so I went to Walmart and I got one of these. So if somebody would like to have this environmentally friendly bag, I can give you that. You got something around you. Would you like to? <laughs> sure. Can I give you that? The Walmart worker is all where it does that say, I used to be 15 uh, soda bottles. Yeah. <laughs> so you can do stuff with it if we focus on it and spend the money to do it. Now, this thing here, I got, I went to a conference of the, uh, this is an, like an engineering conference on sustainability and chemistry, and they gave me this bag, which is also made out of some kind of, you know, what? Um, the, the world's most sustainable tote bag. Well, I think I just gave that one to Sandy, but I don't know. Sustainable tote bag. So I, I'm glad to give this one to somebody too. I'm going to give this to you. Oh, you have enough. I mean, if you have enough. He took me. Don't get another bag. Here the no, no, no. We're going to take it. Look at that. <laughs> Perfect. Aaron Chapman should take you shopping out there. They got like a thousand of books. I'm sure there's probably a couple of you haven't read yet. <laughs> but from what you just a really smart thing to say, you know, he wants to give me stuff. <laughs> Let me go back and she's like, stuff, stuff. We have about a dozen bags like that that hang over the headrest in my wife's van. <laughs> So we go to we go to Home Depot. We go anywhere. It's like, Dave, you got your bags. It's like I got a hundred full bags. I put them in the cart. Say, like, how many thousands of dollars of groceries are you buying? Hey, it doesn't take Let's take much much more. anymore. <laughs> Everywhere you go, they're passing them out to you. Yep. But it's not good idea. Fill up a bag either. Anybody yeah, have any awesome. questions of, of the stuff I presented? The whole idea is just keep thinking, saying, well, what can I do? No, no one of us can do a lot, but everyone can do something. Everyone can do something. Anybody have any questions of me? You don't care if I read this to you? Use reusable water bottle, container for leftovers in restaurants and grow trees. When's the best time to plant a tree? Twenty years ago, three day or twenty years. When's the second best time to plant a tree? Today. Uh, I told you about the, these these guys in Europe, um, these German guys that I, I gave a talk for in Munich. So it was actually a rotary meeting, and I talked about environmental stuff. And they planted three trees for me in Mexico. I will never see. It, but I'm thankful that they did. Great, thank you so much. That's great. So guys, why would guys from Germany plant trees for you in Mexico? Because they're environmentally conscious. Where did they plant in Germany? The galaxy trees are. Oh, you don't need three more trees? 
I don't know. Really not. Let, let's go back to this first one here. Never tell you. Well, you know, <laughs> I've done it a few times already. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> think before I buy. Oh, yes, please. Think before you buy. We're all swimming in stuff, right? So think before you buy, because everything you buy is going to be future land. Take my daughter. Take, take my daughter. No water bottle, compost. Take my so daughter. The one, my daughter lives in Rockville. They don't do recycle. They don't. And she uses so much plastic. It, I can't even go over her house without like okay. Her right. it. So, so what are you going to do with her now? I'm going to get her something that, so she can just give it to me. Don't have to burn her. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you questions. Like, is that allowed to take recyclables from one city to another? Well, how would they do? I don't think I use a lot. But I will, I will tell you this. Like pop cans and stuff, it's illegal to have those cross state lines. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I don't know anyone in jail doing that. <laughs> I don't either. Well, I mean, if you find cans in Ohio and it's close to a Michigan, do it. Or recycle them. You do it. You do it. Take shorter showers. <laughs> yeah, it's like, still be clean. Pair up when you take it. It's a good book out here. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, <laughs> I want to say something snarky. Like, you know, that's kind of like, you know, that's kind of like more fourth. Make sure to shower. That's a great idea. Um, save water from dishes. What can you do with water from your dishes? Water your plants. Oh. And then, yeah, but you know how much soap? I talked about the showers. You know what soap is in there? Almost nothing. You think, but it's good for the plants. Oh, it's when they make fertilizer, they do put soap so that it adheres yeah. to the plant. Yep, yeah, it does. And doesn't that help kill some bugs too? It can. Yeah. So, it's but, depending on like detergents and stuff like that, I work with detergents. So, don't waste vegetables. So, bad, make bad bugs. Vegetables are the worst, right? They make them go bad and you sit down like a nice. Turn water off in the shower, go mad or no. Uh, stop using bottled water. Get a, get a big drying, drying rack. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, you got soap <laughs> money. Three goals, less water, less energy, less stuff, three months, all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> you guys talk to them. That's good. That's good. I, I'm delighted that you guys have come to this. And I'm obviously a little passionate about this. If you want to find me and reach me somehow, the easiest thing to do is find me on LinkedIn. I do Facebook less. <laughs> In my arrogance, uh, I didn't do Facebook at all. I was I was kind of juvenile. Crowd each other. I didn't do Facebook at all. And then I started planning some bands and people like, we can't find you anymore. You don't exist. I said, well, I'm on LinkedIn. Like, what's up? What's a professional network? Oh, <laughs> we're starving musicians now. We don't need professional stuff. So then I started using Facebook. And so you can find me on Facebook. But I, I navigate better on LinkedIn. And I'd love to just make in contact with you. Let me know how some of this stuff is going. You've got goals, plan to make promises, and people listen to you. And I heard you do. I'm not, I'm not a cop. I'm not going to come after you and say, Or did you do this? That's not what I'm going to do. This is your conscience. So I'm going to start to talk. Everybody heard you about this practice. Got you. You hear my talk? You listen, you talk. You got goals. You're going to work on something. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Aaron. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this was, take your whole picture stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my Aaron, thank you so much. Thank Great you. Job. This is wonderful. The winner of a bag.